The Appalachian Mountains are home to some of the most beautiful and iconic wild spaces in America. While they may not have the massive vistas and open spaces of the Rockies or Sierras, much of the Appalachian Mountains receive so much rainfall that they're considered temperate rainforests, making these mountains some of the lushest and greenest places in North America. Now, one of the main reasons that I'm considering moving my family here is so that we can live out in nature. Isabella, what do you think? Is that a waterfall? I want my growing family to directly experience where their food comes from. She's like, this just grows on trees? Did you touch it? She's like, I don't know. I don't know, mom. And for me, living an adventurous lifestyle makes me so glad to be alive. And more than anything, I'd like to teach my daughters how they can feel that same sense of gratitude. He's so pretty, wow. Now last week, we explored the mountains of northern Georgia near the small town of Dahlonega. I don't think I've ever seen such a cool, quaint square with such nice stores. Whoa, this is so cool. And today, we're checking out another part of northern Georgia, this time in the area near the town of Blue Ridge. Also this week, Isabella lives her best life when her favorite food literally falls from the sky. Oh, wow. Dang it. No, well, that one's it. rotten anyway. We learn how to catch trout like a pro. Isabella, your fish is bigger than dad's. <laughs> and we continue to search for our new home. Does this look like someone did a really bad remodel? Oh, dude. <laughs> but first, we wanted to check out Amicalola Falls, one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the region. Okay, baby, this is some tough going, <sighs> but we're gonna check this thing out. Whoa. This is crazy. How did this thing get here? The tree has like grown around it. Whoa. You wanna come on up here, bud? You good? Okay, now we gotta get down, baby. Why you gotta get me into all this kind of trouble? Isabella, what do you think? Is that a waterfall? When the sun comes out and the water's just like misting, oh, it's so pretty. We're gonna be here a long time. Yeah, you're doing great, Issa. You just keep on trekking along. So I'm taking Oso for a walk. It's just like a beautiful little trail here. And uh, I wanted to talk real quick about what our plans are for the next couple of months and kind of what the extent is of this home search that we're on. When we first decided to sell the boat, basically the only thing that we knew was that we were going to move back to the States and that was it. And since we've started this road trip, we've really started to think a lot about like what we want to get out of this next stage in our lives. And we've really started to think that a lot of why we did this is so that we could be closer to our families, closer to our parents, and our folks live in Florida. And so we are thinking that we just don't wanna live too far from them. And so we know we wanna live in the mountains. And we have pretty much come to the conclusion that that means that we have to find a place in the Appalachian mountain range. There's just no other mountains that are reasonably close to Florida. And that's great because the Appalachian mountains are awesome. Like what we've seen so far, we absolutely love. Um, but we wanted to let you know that the extent of our search is going to basically be like West Virginia and South. So mostly the Southern Appalachian mountains. We are loving this whole travel content that we're doing right now. Like I just, I'm really enjoying this a lot. And so if you're enjoying this, first of all, let us know in the comments. Um, but secondly, just know that we are kind of planning on doing more of this. Like even once we find a home base, even once we settle down, we're gearing up to continue to do it like on a seasonal basis. So let us know if you want us to keep making travel content like this. And uh, yeah, looking forward to continuing the search for the new home. The Appalachian Mountains stretch from eastern Canada down to the U.S. states of Georgia and Alabama. They're much older and more eroded than the other U.S. mountain ranges like the Rockies and Sierra Nevada, which give them their characteristic rolling hills and rounded peaks, 
rather than the sharp and dramatic peaks of the younger western ranges. But the Appalachian Mountains are known for their dense forests, rich biodiversity, and long cultural history. They also have a much more mild climate and receive more rainfall than their western counterparts, contributing to their lush green landscapes. So while the Rockies and the Sierras are known for their wide open spaces and alpine environments, the Appalachians offer a more intimate and enclosed feel, with very dense tall forests, flowing rivers, and vibrant fall foliage. Okay, so we are now at Mercier Apple Orchard and we're gonna pick some apples. Hello, oh, how are you? Good, thanks. Hey, pretty Say lady. hi. I didn't think apple picking would be such a fun adventure, but this is awesome. Yeah. So look at the big flowers. <gasps> wow. So he was saying you want it to be blushy. So like that's kind of blushy. Mm -hmm. Isabella, want to eat an apple? Hmm. Yeah, it's like a slightly tart Fuji. I'm kind of an apple connoisseur, buddy. Yeah. Okay. You want to get the apple? One, two, pull, get ya. Isabella, you think Dad can get that one? Yeah? Yeah, you think so? Okay. It's pretty high. Oh, wow. Dang it. No, well, that one's it. rotten anyway. And the one other one fell. <sighs> Just have to find another one. Isabella, whenever you're ready, you can come join us. Isabella, if you're gonna choke, do it over here next to us. <laughs> good job, good bite. She's like, this is pretty good stuff, Dad. <laughs> Can we do this every day? She's like, this just grows on trees? <laughs> I think apple picking is Isabella's dream activity. She just gets to eat and walk around and be outside. <laughs> okay, we got our bags. So we're ready to rock. I'm not a farmer at all. Like I've never really grown food, but it's so crazy to remember that food just grows out of the ground. Right, Isabella? You think that's a good point. It's a good <laughs> point, Dad. Dad, you're so smart and insightful. Yeah. Can you say oh, that? What is that? What, what are you trying to say to me, Isabella? <laughs> Can I spit in there? No, we're full. Man. Are you just getting, this, this has gone off the rails. Check it out. He said, get like 10 more. Let's <laughs> just stuff them in here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pregnant. Yeah. What Lump, are you going to do, judge me? Lumpy baby. <laughs> All right, so we are heading deep into the woods with Jess, our realtor, to check out house number two. I actually know very little about this house, but Jess thinks that we might like it. All right, so this is your basement build, meaning most of the home is either partially or entirely subterranean. I think of it like a hobbit hole. You've uh -huh. got an access at, at ground level, but then you can go down underground. And how many acres is this? 1.4. 1.4, so kind of what you can see here most likely? More or less. All right, let's take a look inside. So this looks like kind of a utility room. Yep, this will be your main living area. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of like, someone was like, you know what, I'm gonna paint today. Yeah. And then they like, <laughs> they almost finished and they were like, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, dude. <laughs> No joke. Okay, we thought the last place was the crime scene, but I think clearly this is the crime scene. Well, at least we have Dax with us. Yeah, that's true, actually. That is a really nice feature for your business, Jess. Oh, you know what? This kitchen is actually nice. It's bigger than the last one. It's bigger than I expected. And you could totally like open that window up so you get a nice view when you're cooking. Does this, to you, look like someone did a really bad remodel? or like never really built it well in the first place or just like with the raw. It looks unfinished because yeah. what I'd like to see mud over these drywall seams and make it actually look like a like wall so you can still see the tape here. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't really finish it. Man, the, the whole like no window subterranean thing. I don't know if I can get behind that. This one, I feel like it's harder to see the potential because it's not as cutesy. Yeah, you know? totally. But it's I mean, they're like the same thing. This one's just <laughs> <laughs> he likes you. Honestly, for the price they want, this is rougher than I expected. If you were to embark on this project, I mean, we've got mold evidence in there, so you'd be taking out a lot of this. In terms of like a structure that is infested with mold, is it still financially viable to 
like tear down as much as you need to get rid of the mold? For the most part, yes. In a house like this where it's already so unfinished, the financial snowball is not as severe as if it was more finished. That makes sense. Well, because you know it's gonna happen anyway. Exactly. The snowball's already there. Exactly, yeah, you're right. already so, gonna have to take bites out of this house yeah. to, to make it rentable, to make it habitable, and then make it, make it yeah. cute, make it nice. I don't know if it's got potential as an Airbnb short-term rental, um, com especially compared to the other one, to the log cabin, but it was a unique type. I just wanna get you guys out here to see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. see what's out here. No, that's like, we're in the learning phase, so yes. getting our eyes on a bunch of spots is kind of the goal right now. Just but yeah, I do there. hear you where there's, there's projects that yeah. on the other side have like a character to it, and then there's projects that on the other side don't have so much character. And exactly. yeah, I feel like the rectangle stone <laughs> bunker house, murder houses, <laughs> has a little less kind character. Kind of looks like a medical research facility yeah, to me, totally <laughs> honestly. Does. Oh my God. Fringe experiments happening here, exactly. I don't know. Isabella, are you ready for an adventure? Good morning, it is 5.30 in the morning. We are getting a very early start to go do some fishing today. Yeah. Isabella, Ooh. the early bird catches the worm, okay? And hopefully lots of trout. So obviously I don't like waking up really early, but uh, it's just like sailing where I do love being underway before dawn, you know? Once you actually are underway, it feels so good. And it's exactly the same way in the truck. It feels good, but it feels a little sleepy. <laughs> This is a sweet boat. So the, the raft is so that it can draw as little water as possible. It's pretty shallow. Yeah. yeah. You'll see it goes over stuff that's just an inch or two deep today. Come on, Isabella, we got fish to catch. <laughs> Let me take some of your stuff here. Um, I got uh, everything I need. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then let's, uh... yeah. Oh, you can take this hat though, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> there you go. Nice one. All right. So most of the fishing you've done before in the past, you work it or jig it or move the bait to try to make it look alive and make fish eat it. And that's not the case here today. It's really pretty simple. We're gonna throw it back upstream. We're gonna let it land, close our bail, reel our line tight, and then just drag it along the bottom. When we feel a bite, we're gonna set the hook and reel the fish in. The hard part at first should be which one's bottom and which one's fish. So you should feel these leads just kind of tapping along the bottom of the river. Uh, the whole way as you go, and that means you're close enough where when the fish bites it, you'll actually feel it when he hits. And do we have to kiss the fish when we catch him? You can. I won't hold it against you yeah. if you do. <laughs> I've been known to kiss a fish. That's a good shot. <gasps> All right, just slide him right in the net. There we oh, go. look how pretty he is. Oh, I think I sure. got one too. Oh, oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, look. The little guy. Isabella, your fish oh. is bigger than dad's. Yay, we did it. <laughs> you just got your butt whooped, buddy. I know. <laughs> in North America, trout are most commonly found in the cooler northern regions like the Rocky Mountains, Sierra Nevada, and parts of the Pacific Northwest, where colder mountain streams fed by snowmelt and glacial runoff create the perfect environment for trout to flourish. They are extremely extremely active fish and it takes a lot of energy for them to dart around rivers or swim swiftly against a current. The reason trout love cold water is because more oxygen is able to be dissolved in cold water than in warm water. So the trout are able to breathe more efficiently through their gills in colder water and they need this higher oxygen content to sustain their active lifestyles. That's also why trout love turbulent streams and rivers, because all that turbulence helps to oxygenate the water. But when water temperatures climb too high, or if the water becomes too still, the trout's survival becomes difficult. And yet the Tocoa River here in Northern Georgia is much further south and much warmer than the vast majority of other trout habitats. And yet the trout thrive 
live here. That's because this section of the Tokoa is fed by cold water released from the depths of Lake Blue Ridge. The deep water from the dam is much cooler than the surface water, and yet when it's released from the dam and goes through a bunch of the rapids, that cold water becomes very oxygen rich, which allows the trout to thrive. Plus the higher elevations of the Appalachian region and the extremely dense tree cover help maintain cooler water temperatures even during the warm summer months. So do you have any tips on telling the bottom from a bite? Um, no, not really. The bottom doesn't have a tail. It's a smart <laughs> animal thing, I can tell you. Like, no, I think experience is, there you go. There you go, you got that one. Like, I can look at it and tell you now, yeah. watching the rod tip, but yeah. it's, it's one of those things 25 years ago, I was pulling away and cranking on it like everybody else was. Um, he's almost there. One, two more handle turns. There we go. Look, he's got another fishy. Oh, another another fishy. rainbow. He's so pretty, wow. Issa, we gotta get the slack out. Oh my nice. gosh, there's another one. Wow, you wanna touch you it? Wanna touch it? Nicely, you wanna touch? Yeah. Nice fish. It's slimy. Nice, you touch it. She's like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. know, Mom. Man, it's so calm and peaceful out here. I love the sounds of the river. Set the hook, set the hook. And reel, 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 reel. Oh, and reel. <laughs> you got him. Did Keep I get your it? I think so. No, maybe not. I lost him. Do you have a sibling? Brother, sister? I have a brother. Do you ever just make you like, Arr! Sure, yeah. You know that's that feeling? Got, yeah, okay. Put that in your head. There you go. Oh, There's that feeling. It. Good job. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. <laughs> trying to convince you to set the hook yeah. is what I was after. <laughs> there you go. Good job. First trout. Yeah. I was cheating nice. before. Captain <laughs> Joe cast it and then I just reeled it in. This is actually all me. That one you nailed. Got it. Around, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Good job, okay, I'm buddy. I have to kiss you. Uh oh, uh oh. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Okay, here you go, buddy. Okay, you're hiding the fish, though. Well, he's slippery. Not a whole lot to hide. <laughs> hey, 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 watch it. Oh, that's good. Oh, no. Okay, you want to uh, diaper time. do a diaper change mission? Yeah. All right, let's see. What do you, what looks best to y'all? Uh, that that may be the easiest. Or... Wee! Wow, All right, look so at I'll that. hop out and hold the boat, and then Thank we'll you. unload you guys out of the back. You can go take care of her. It's very convenient that you have a diaper changing station on route. I like that, don't you? <laughs> I'll go advertising that now. All part of the plan. <laughs> I got you. Okay, okay. Okay, there we go. I don't see new very often, but that's the first diaper change yeah. I've ever seen on the side <laughs> of the river. <laughs> What superstitions are there for fishing? I'm gonna tell you like uh, Michael Scott would. I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. A little stitious, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so I tell you something won't work, they'll turn around and they'll do it. I've tried to think like a trout my entire life, and the only thing it's really taught me for certain in 20 some years of doing it is that trout don't think like people very often. That said, the one thing I really love about this boat is it's the only place left on earth I still get to be right. Yeah. <laughs> I go home and I don't know nothing. Hey baby, did you have fun catching the fish? She's like, I'm gonna have to think about that. <laughs> so, in the grand scheme of things, how'd we do here? Uh, not too bad. For having a two year old and all the cameras with us, I think you did great. Nice. Had great weather, had good time. Henry David Thoreau once wrote that a lot of men fished their entire lives and never realized it wasn't even fish they were after. I think that's true for most of us. That was pretty deep, man. It's the truth, though. Yeah, it's very true. I've done a lot of thinking about fishing in my life. I yeah. Have. <laughs> they say that there are three phases to every trout fisherman's life, and the first one is how many fish can I kill? The second one is what's the biggest fish I can catch? But then apparently there's this third phase that I've been told about by the old guys who've taught me to fish, where you're apparently just happy to be out here in it and doing it. Look, baby. <gasps> These are the fishies. She's like, that's not what I remember them I looking like. I don't remember them without heads. <laughs> After fishing, we made a quick detour to check out the nearby town of Blue Ridge. Northern Georgia has around a dozen small mountain towns. And like the majority of these towns, Blue Ridge has focused a lot on tourism in the last couple decades. And today it's best known as a trout fishing mecca, as well as the home of the Blue Ridge Scenic Railway, which is a historic railway that now takes tourists on rides along the Tokoa River. 
All right, I am super excited to cook up these beautiful rainbow trout that we caught ourselves. We've got one, two, three, four, five fish. So that should definitely be more than enough for me and Jordan tonight. Oh, baby. That looks so good. I, know, I hope it tastes as good as it looks. <laughs> taste okay, test, buddy. I'm gonna taste the fish first. You gotta get some skin too. And crunchy. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Just tastes like very fresh and simple. A little lemony. You cooked it really well. Because trout's good, but normally, like a little fishy. Oh, well, I didn't do much. It was the air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> we are not sponsored by Ninja, but Ninja, if you're watching, definitely interested. Yeah. Okay, we're leaving Vogel State Park and we are heading to Tallulah Gorge State Park. Oh my, <laughs> no, no, no. We are up in the mountains outside of Clayton, Georgia, and we are at the Fox Fire Museum. This house saw so many generations be born, live their lives, and die. Look at that little house. <laughs> 